Queen of Spades, dramatised by Michelin Wando, from a short story by Alexander Pushkin, with Moira Lister as the Countess, Greg Wise as Herman, and Amanda Root as Lees. the right card out of the whole pack. How bleak the sky is. Four suits in every pack of cards. How dull the evening is. How tediously the hours pass. Five spades. Shall we play cards? Six clubs. Oh, yes. Let's play cards, now. Seven. Diamonds. Deal. Yes. Let us play cards. Eight. Hearts. Deal. Now. I shall play. I shall win. Nine. Kings and queens. Oh, what does it feel like to win? I shall lose. I always lose. Ten. Aces and jacks. Who wants to lose? I'll let you have credit. Eleven. Trumps. One of the suits will be trumps. Trumps will win. In the bleak winter weather. Diamonds, clubs, spades, hearts. Twelve and thirteen. Let us meet together. Either we shall win or we shall lose. Hearts, clubs, spades, diamonds, win or lose. One, two, three, four. It makes no difference. I always win in the end. <laughs> I want to win. I shall win. I shall find him. Can't give up now. I know when to stop, sir. Come and have supper. I'm starving. No, I'm not hungry. Not at all. Come on, play again. I shall whet your appetite. Uh, waiter, bomb of champagne. Coming up. Now you're talking the room off. Champagne is always welcome. <laughs> oh, you're a lucky bastard. You always win. Not always. How about you? Tonight I've lost. What do you expect? I always lose. Oh, come. That's not true. Oh, I have no luck. Never, never, never. I don't think I'd ever come out a winner. You don't take risks. That's your problem. Champagne, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Uh, quite honestly, I, I don't actually like gambling. Uh, then why go on playing? Well, it's a habit, I suppose. This is what my friends do, but I'm lonely. I like the company. Don't you ever get excited, you know, carried away? Hmm. Huh? No, not really. I get into a sort of rhythm. I gamble, but I never lose my head. And I never win. Uh, That's the way it is. Boring. That's me. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, there you are. Thank you, sir. Weren't you tempted to back the red once tonight? No, not once. Your self-control amazes me. I don't know how you do it. Well, that's how I am. It's simple. Oh, look! Oh, look, over there. 
Where? The, the, the man who just stood up, the, the young officer in the engineer's uniform. Well, what about him? Uh, he's never held a car before, and, and he's never made a bet in his life. Oh, his first visit to the club. Uh, he sat up all night watching us play. Yeah. <laughs> Herman! How do you know? Good Lord. I've known him for years. We were students together. Oh. Oh, hello! He looks perfectly charming. <laughs> Don't you believe it? He's rather shifty, young man. Insecure, I think, but uh, very stubborn. <laughs> Come over here, Harlan. Sorry, my old mate. <laughs> I didn't know this was one of your haunts. Well, I might say the same to you. You've been sitting here all night, haven't you? Yes. Gambling? No, just watching everyone. Oh. I'm interested in cards <laughs> why don't you play i haven't got any money to gamble with hearts <laughs> nonsense you're a coward don't you want to win no i don't need money i'm not interested in the things money can buy well then why watch other people gamble i like watching other people squirm in anticipation diamonds i need love isn't that right tomsky What's that, Helen? I said I don't care about money. Isn't that true? Hearts and diamonds, no spades. Herman is cautious, just like my grandmother. Your grandmother? The Countess Anna Fedotovna. Oh, yes. Ah, I've heard of her, the uh, Moscow Venus. Exactly, <laughs> Moscow Venus. I can't understand why my grandmother doesn't gamble anymore. Venus. Hearts and Venus, with whom will I fall in love? <laughs> but, but surely there's nothing surprising in an old lady in her 80s not wanting to gamble. Well, I've heard of her. There's some mystery, isn't there? She used to be a great socialite, a great beauty. Isn't that right, Tomsky? Yes, that's right. Well, tell us more, Tomsky. Yes, yes come do. On. <laughs> come on, Tomsky. Very well. I think we should all hear this. Be quiet. Oh, be quiet, so everyone. Tomsky is about to tell us a story. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's the truth, not a story. <laughs> the truth, eh? A truth that is stranger than any story. Oh, 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 <laughs> some more champagne first, eh, Naruto? As much as you like, sir. Uh, waiter, more champagne. Uh, yes, Mr. Naruto. <laughs> well, then. Are you sitting comfortably? <laughs> <laughs> about, uh, what, 60 years ago? My grandmother went to live in Paris. She was quite the rage then. People would run after her to catch a glimpse of La Venus Moscovite. Oh. That's what they called her. The Moscow Venus. <laughs> I don't believe you. It's a stupid type. It's absolutely true. Even Cardinal Richelieu was at her beck and call. <laughs> Grandmama maintains he very nearly blew his brains out because of her cruelty to him. Oh. See, unrequited love. Oh, no. Beware. Oh. Beware of love, Venus and hearts. And was she a gambler then? Oh, yes. In fact, one evening at court, she lost a very considerable sum to the Duc d'Orléans. She returned home to her husband. My grandfather. Can you help me undo my dress, darling? Certainly, my dear. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's much better. Darling, mm -hmm. I have something to tell you. It's a little awkward. Indeed, my dear. Surprise me. Yes, I'm... I'm afraid I... You lost money again, didn't you? Ouch! I mean you to loosen the laces, not tighten them. Actually, darling, I don't know how it happened. Oh, I can imagine exactly how it happened. You'd like me to settle the debt, I expect? Darling, would you... How much is it this time, Anna? <laughs> I daren't tell you. Ah. It's a huge amount. We can't possibly afford it. <laughs> Oh, you have a nerve, Anna. Do you realize that in six months you've squandered nearly half a million rubles? Squandered? Is that the word for pleasure? Pass me my night cream, dear, please. You must remember, my dear Anna, that in Paris we have neither our Moscow nor our Saratov estates on which to draw. Oh, darling, you'll think of something. No. What? I'm not going to pay this time. Oh, it's 
sweetie. Mm -hmm. Just for me. <laughs> My mind is made up. No. Sweetest of all men. No. <laughs> I've had enough. Don't you hit me. <laughs> well then, I shall go to bed. And you can sleep in the dressing room. You will see how you like your punishment. You can kiss me and slap me as much as you like. But it will make no difference. I'm not paying. Never again. Oh, please, my darling. No. Look, darling. There are debts and debts. <laughs> a prince is different from a coach builder. When we have debts, it is fitting for our station. When a coach builder has debts, it is because he can't run his business properly. Ah. It is a matter of status. You must protect my status. You can argue as much as you like. I shan't listen to a word you say. Well, what am I to do? I don't care what you do. You can go to hell as far as I'm concerned. Go to hell yourself! Men! Stupid, selfish men! <laughs> so what did she do? Well, among her acquaintances was a very remarkable man. Huh? Have you heard of Le Con Saint-Germain? Ah, yes, of course. Mm. He's something of a legend. He claimed to have discovered the elixir of light. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbish. There's no such thing. <laughs> and the Philosopher's Stone. Oh, oh really? No. He was nothing but a charlatan, a cheap magician. Yes. Casanova writes in his memoirs that he was a spy. I wouldn't well, be well, at all well, surprised. Well. But be that as it may, Saint-Germain was a very dignified man and much respected in Parisian society. You sent for me, my dear Countess Fedotovna? Yes, Count. Oh, what can I do for you? I am in terrible distress, my dear. Oh. My husband is inhuman. He will not listen to me. Oh, dear. He will not take any notice of my needs. I have no choice but to rely on your friendship and your kindness. My dear Countess, you are quite transparent. You cannot refuse me. I could oblige you with the sum you want. Thank you. But I have to be sure that I know exactly when you will pay me back. I'll repay everything. You needn't worry. <laughs> you haven't finished repaying the money you owe me from the last loan, Countess. What on earth am I to do? I do not know which way to turn. You are my only friend. There is no one else I can ask. Uh, there is a way out. Really? Yes. Tell me. Please, for God's sake, tell me. You could win the money back. Win it back? That's what I said. But, my dear Count, I have no money at all. I have nothing to gamble that with. That does not matter. I can help you. Listen to me carefully now. Listen to the hearts and the clubs and the diamonds and the spades. Somewhere among them lies my destiny. Yes. Well, what did he tell her? He revealed a great secret. That very evening. Grandmama appeared at Versailles at the casino to meet the Duc d'Orléans again. <laughs> Are you keeping the bank today, Duke? I am indeed, Countess. I'm afraid I haven't bought enough money to pay off my debt to the bank. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> I'm afraid I overslept. <laughs> and I lost all my beauty spots, so my maid had to go out and buy me some new one. <laughs> I have been too busy to go to my own bank to take out a loan. Do you want to play? Just once. Will you accept a promissory note? From you, Countess, yes. Shall I deal? I am ready. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack, Queen, King, Ace. 
my grandmother selected three cards and played them one after the other. <laughs> All three cards. One. One after another. Oh, of course they did. Of course they did. One, two, three. Such excitement. That's pure luck. It's yes. chance. Oh. Everyone's dream. <laughs> <laughs> if I could be sure of winning, then I'd gamble. No, wouldn't we all have it? A man after my own heart. Were the cards marked? I don't think so. <laughs> How did oh, you do it? it? Yeah. I really don't know. Oh, oh, what? What? Oh, no, no. You have a grandmother who knows how to play three lucky cards in succession, yes. and you haven't learned her secret? <laughs> That's right. Oh, oh. Then who does know? Oh. No one. Oh, what? what? My grandmother had four sons. Mm -hmm. All four were desperate gamblers. And yet, she did not reveal her secret to a single one of them. I don't believe you. Someone must know. Yes. Narumov is right. Yes. On my word of honor, it is absolutely true. Oh, I don't believe no, it. Don't well, some years later, there was a young man called Chaplitsky. Well, well, well. He won millions and then died in absolute poverty. Squandered the lot. Well, yeah, but, but, uh, what has this Chaplitsky got to do with your grandmother? Yes. Come along. I believe she took pity on Chaplitsky and told him the secret. Countess, you must help me. I'm desperate. Tell me your secret. Why should I? Because only you can understand me. How is that? I have risked everything. That's why I have nothing. You understand why. Why? What is it you think I understand? Nothing matters. The world is a terrible place. That is why you gamble. And that is why I gamble. <laughs> You're an impertinent young man. No one has ever guessed that I gamble out of despair of the world. I knew you would understand. I will tell you the three winning cards as a reward for oh. your perspicacity. Thank you, Countess. Thank you. You are to play them one after the other. And will I win? Why do you want to win? Because I've met a girl. She makes the world feel less terrible. I want her, and I need money for her. You will win. Oh, I promise you. I cannot thank you enough. There is one condition. What is that? You must promise me that afterwards you will never touch a card as long as you live. I will. I promise. I will never play cards again if I win this time. Just this once. If I win... Love will keep me going, I know it. Now, these are the cards. The mystery, the magic, love and winning. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I swear. Come, you must finish the story. Something else must have happened. No, I have talked enough. My throat is dry. Oh, waiter, more champagne. And then we shall play again. <laughs> Tomsky, mm? I must know more. Where does your grandmother live? Not far away from the casino. Why? I must meet her. <laughs> Herman, why on earth would Listen. you want... I am going mad. I have nothing worth living for. What? But you are always smiling. You seem so happy. It's what people expect. But it's a lie. I feel I can admit it to you. I am dreadfully lonely. Until now. Your story has given me hope. If I could fall in love, 
with an innocent young girl. That would save me from loneliness, I know. Well, there is someone. Really? But you would need money. Then it is hopeless. Well, perhaps not. Perhaps there is a way. I'll do anything. Very well. Listen to me. No, enough rouge, please. Uh, a few more hairpins. And a tall cap with a flame-coloured ribbons. Now, that will do. Is that all your toilet for today, madam? Oh, I have no pretensions to beauty. But, Countess, you are still very handsome. No, my beauty faded long ago, my dear. Even though I give as much time and care to my toilet as I did 60 years ago. I am sure you do, Countess. Come in. Good morning, Grandmother. Paul. Bonjour, Mademoiselle Lise. Good morning. Come in, Paul, dear. Sit down. Lise, a chair for Paul. Here you are, Monsieur. Thank you, Lise. I must talk to you, but later, Lise. Grandmother, I have a favour to ask you. What is it, Paul? I want to introduce you to a very good friend of mine. Oh, I May know I? too many people already, Paul. Oh, here. but this is a... By the way, were you at the princess's last night? No, no, not that cap, please, after all, the blue one. Yes, oh, it was most enjoyable. We danced and played cards until five in the morning. Oh, Mademoiselle Yaletsky looked enchanting. Oh, Grandmother, my friend. Oh, come, my dear. What is there enchanting about her? She isn't a patch on her grandmother, Princess Daria Pretovna. By the way, I expect Princess Daria Pretovna must have aged quite considerably, eh? <laughs> aged? <laughs> She's been dead for the last seven years. Dead? Oh, yes, I'd forgotten. We were maids of honour together. And as we were being presented, the Empress said, Young ladies... Yes, you've told me that story countless times, Grandmother. Well, or a hundred times at least. Well, Paul, if you are bored, I shan't tell you the story again. And I certainly will not meet your friend. I shall go to my dressing room. Please, help me up. Uh, 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 uh. Where is my snuff box? Oh, here it is, Countess. Thank you. Excuse me. You may amuse yourselves. Yes, Grandmother. <sighs> Who is it you want to introduce to the Countess? Uh, an old friend of mine. Oh, is, is he in the army? Yes, in the engineers. Oh, how wonderful. What does he look like? Tall, dark. You'll like him. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you want me to meet him? Because when we were students together, he acted as my second in a duel. He was a loyal friend. And he's lonely. I'm sure you'll like him. How will I meet him? Your grandmother will never allow him to visit me. Don't worry. I have had an idea. Listen to me. If you look out of the window now and again, you may catch a glimpse of him. One day this week, when I am alone, I look out of the window. There she is. Soon, round the corner of a house on the other side of the street, a young officer appears. I blush. Colour floods her cheeks. He is wearing the uniform of the engineers. She takes up her work and bends her head over her embroidery frame. Lise! Lise! Oh. Come here! Oh, come in, Countess. Order the carriage, Lise. I want to go for a drive. What? 
What's the matter with you, my child? Are you deaf? Be quick. Order the carriage. It's ordered already, Countess, remember? You ordered it before breakfast. Did I? Well, well, on second thoughts, my dear, sit beside me. Talk to me. Bring that footstool. A little closer. Good. Now, what shall we talk about? Excuse me, Countess. What on earth are you doing? Your carriage is ready. There he is. There, out, out in the street. The carriage is waiting for us. Come, Countess, let us go out. Why do you keep looking out of the window? Who is there? Hmm? Who are you looking at? No one, Countess. The sun is shining. Shall I fetch your hat? It looks cold. I can see the trees blowing in the wind. It's windy, isn't it? No, there's no wind at all, really. Oh, you say the first thing that comes into your head. Shut the window. But, Countess, the carriage... I said, shut the window. Very well, Countess. Please, my child. I shall rest. You, you can take up your embroidery. Paul is coming to tea. You may entertain him without me today. Yes, I'm, I'm tired. Yes, Countess. You are not happy, Lise. No. Dependence is a bitter thing. My grandmother is not bad-hearted. No, but she has all the caprices of a woman spoiled by society. She is rich. She is used to having her own way. She's merely selfish. Like all old people who have no more use for love and are out of touch with life around them. She can't help you. Well, she goes out all the time. She hates the dances she goes to. Well, she knows everyone. She's a well-known figure in society. She needs the company. What about you? Oh, I envy her. She cares about no one, and so it doesn't matter whether she enjoys what she does or not. Well, she is very punctilious, though. She receives everyone, observing the strictest etiquette. The servants do what they like and rob her without shame. Would you like some more tea? Mm. Thank you. So, that really is my life, Mr. Tomsky. Mm. Is my grandmother kind to you? Not particularly. I pour out tea and I'm reprimanded for using too much sugar. I read novels aloud to her and I'm blamed for all the author's mistakes. I accompany the Countess on her drives, and then she holds me responsible for the weather and the state of the roads. How much does she pay you? I'm supposed to receive a salary, but the Countess doesn't pay me in full. She never has enough money with her, and yet I am expected to be as well-dressed as everyone else. Oh, I want a different life. What happens when you go out? Um, uh, um, do you meet friends? When I go out? Wow. Everyone knows me, and yet no one takes any notice of me. I dance only when someone is short of a partner. Ladies come and take me by the arm whenever they need to go to the cloakroom to rearrange some detail of their toilette. I am not a person in my own right. Aren't you waiting for some handsome deliverer to come and take you away from all this tedium? None of the young men take any notice of me. Anyway, they are far prettier girls than I. <sighs> You are a hundred times more charming than all the cold, brazen-faced heiresses in Petersburg. You are very kind. Well? What do you mean? Have you seen anyone yet whom you might like? Someone in the street, perhaps? Well... <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. Have you spoken to him? Not yet. Something will happen, Lise. Something to make you happy. Mm -hmm.
I often creep away from the tedious, glittering drawing room to go and weep in my attic with its wallpaper screen, its chest of drawers, its small looking glass and painted wooden bedstead, where a tallow candle burns dimly in a brass candlestick. I look out of the window by chance. There he is again. I have been dreaming of the three cards all night. Is he thinking of me? Ace, king, queen. He is so handsome. Supposing the old countess were to reveal her secret to me and tell me how to find the three winning cards. I am sure he is thinking of me. Jack, ten, nine. That is the man I want. I could be introduced to the old lady, become her lover, perhaps. Love shines out of his eyes. Eight, seven, six, he will be mine. Oh, what am I thinking of? The old lady is 87. Five, four, three. He will love me more than anyone. He will take me away, give me another life. Economy. Moderation and hard work must be my three winning cards. With them, I can treble my capital, increase it sevenfold, and thus find leisure and independence. And yet, if I gamble just once, if I gamble and win, So many carriages, lighted porches. Out of the carriage steps the dancing ship, a military boot with a clinking spur, a diplomat striped stockings and buckled shoes. Fur coats and cloaks. I want a fur cloak. I walk along the street. I sit at the window. I watch the rich young ladies. A face at a window. She is beautiful. Money is more beautiful. A green baize table, stacks of banknotes and piles of gold. If only I could gamble. A rosy face, a green baize table. I would play card after card, turning down the corners, winning, winning, winning. I am sure I would win. A pair of black eyes, money. Stacks of banknotes. Break in the gold. Stuff your pockets with banknotes. So many windows. So much money. Here I am, waiting for the man who will gamble for me. Piles of gold. Everything your heart desires, and me, if you play your cards right. I must have money. Whatever it takes. He must want me. Yes. The way to the mistress is through the maid's heart. I need you to love me. That is the way I shall follow. Come to me, I can help you. I shall come every day and stand beneath the windows of her house. Please, where are you? Here I am. There she sits at her embroidery frame. There he is, a young officer in the engineers standing and gazing at me. I lower my head and go on with my work. I stand and stare at her. I go on sewing. She sews and sews. She does not raise her head once. I do not move. Please! When the luncheon bell goes, I rise and put my embroidery frame away. I wait. After lunch, he is still there. I look at him briefly. She looks at me now and again. Every day for a week. I can tell when you arrive. Even when my head is bent over my work. Every day you look at me for longer and longer. Now, when I look at you, your pale cheeks flush very suddenly. After a week, you smile at me. And after a week, I smile at him. And then, after another week, 
Come along, Lise. The carriage is waiting. There he is, a few yards away by the front door. His face hidden behind his fur collar. His dark eyes sparkle beneath his fur cap. She is slight, vulnerable, eager. This will be easy. Hurry up, Lise. Hurry up. This is the man. I'm coming, Countess. So easy. I wait till she returns home. He is still there, standing in the street, staring at me. Such velvet eyes. Come and help me out of the carriage, Liz. I'm coming, Countess. There, take uh, my hand. Uh, Oh, 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 be careful, you oh, clumsy child. Allow me, Countess. Ah. Let me help you. So ah. close. Thank you. You are most courteous, young man. Take the Countess's other hand, my dear. Ah. Make sure my hand touches hers. Here, Countess. Uh. His hand touches mine. Thank you. Gently now, Countess. Look in your hand when I have gone. I will. Thank you, sir. A letter. You are quite safe now, Countess. Hide it in your glove. Read it when you are alone. I will. Come along, Lise. My dear, forgive my presumption. I have never seen anyone as beautiful as you. And I've never written to a stranger before. I find myself shy and unsure. May I introduce myself? I am the son of a German who settled in Russia. I was left a small capital sum. I have always felt very strongly that it is important to be independent, and so I have never touched even the interest on my income. On what does he live, I wonder? I live on my pay as an officer in the engineers. But it is not enough. Especially now when I have fallen in love with you. In love with me? What nonsense. A letter for you, miss. A man gave it to me outside the milliner's. Thank you. He is persistent. Let me tell you more about myself. I deny myself all extravagance. But I am ambitious as well as reserved, and my companions rarely make fun of me. I have strong passions and an ardent imagination, but strength of character has preserved me from the customary mistakes of youth. Three cards. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. I am a gambler at heart, but I never touch cards. Three winning cards. Does he love me? My means do not allow me to risk the necessary in the hope of acquiring the superfluous. One, two, three. I spend night after night at the card tables watching the vicissitudes of the game. I cannot help it. I do not know why. Because you want to win me. Perhaps you are a gambler at heart. Perhaps you may gamble where I cannot. My dear, I love you. Who is this man to be so bold? I love you. I have never been in love before. I love you. I have never loved before. I love you. He could give me a new life. She is weakening. I can hear the chink of gold coins. Shall I answer his letter? Do I want money for her or for myself? Do I love someone who stares and stares at me? Is she looking at me? I shall answer. This is wrong. <laughs> I 
am sure that your intentions are honorable. Honorable? Oh, yes. Honor is my business. Our acquaintance ought not to have begun in this manner. We have not been properly introduced. I am returning your letter to you, and hope that in future I shall have no cause to complain of being shown such lack of respect. Letters are a sign of adoration. I shall persuade you that I love you. You will see. Another note, miss, from the milliner's establishment again. Y you have made a mistake, my dear. This note is not for me. Oh, yes. It is for you. It's definitely addressed to you. Look. My dear, I wish you to come and meet me. He will not give up. We have so much to say to each other. He must love me. Please come and meet me. Oh, he would not persist in this way. Oh, this is quite ridiculous. Be good enough, my dear, not to bring me any more letters. I shall not give in. Every day he sends me a letter by some means. Every day and every day I shall not give up. <gasps> oh, this man, this romantic man. I love you. No one else could ever pursue me like this, I'm sure. I shall never leave you. I shall always be here with you. How can I resist him? I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> oh, you win, Herman. You win. <laughs> <laughs> My dear Herman, there is a ball tonight at the embassy. The Countess and I will be there. We shall stay until about two o'clock. After we have gone, the servants will go to their quarters. Come to the house at half past eleven. I will leave the side door unlocked. Walk straight up the stairs. Turn to the left at the top of the stairs and keep straight on until you reach the Countess's bedroom. Open the door carefully. In her bedroom, behind a screen to the right of the window, you will find two small doors. The one on the right leads into the study where the Countess never goes. And the one on the left opens into a passage. Open that door and you will see a narrow, winding staircase that leads up to my room. At ten o'clock. I creep like a tiger trembling for its prey. Wet snow falls in huge flakes. The street lamps burn dimly. The streets are deserted. I wait outside the embassy. <laughs> My feet are like ice. My heart is warm and resolute. The door is open. The footmen are waiting. Twenty-five minutes past eleven. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Eleven thirty. At last. There she is. The old woman wrapped in a sable fur being lifted out of the carriage by two footmen. Then my lovely Lise in a light cloak with flowers in her hair. What is the matter, Paul? Oh, I'm fed up with Princess Pauline. She won't dance with me. She's flirting with some vacuous young man. Oh, please. Will you be my partner and dance the mazurka with me? Oh, would it be right to dance with you? Of course! Oh, please dance with me, just this once. Very well, just this once. I stand out of sight without my greatcoat feeling neither wind nor snow. I wait. I watch the dancers. Time to go back to the Countess's house. 
You're not second best, you know. I know I am. <laughs> but I don't mind. I love dancing. I just never get the chance. Oh, you wish you were dancing with someone else. I can tell. How could you no. tell? I am sure you wish you were dancing with an officer in the engineers. Oh, really? I don't know any officers in the engineers. Oh, Liz, you are not telling me the truth. Why do you say that? A friend, a very remarkable friend, has told me something. And who is this remarkable <laughs> man? His name is Herman. Herman? Oh, I don't know anyone called Herman. Oh, no. No. Do you want to know more? If you want to tell me. This Herman is a truly romantic figure. He has the profile of a Napoleon and the soul of Mephistopheles. That sounds very dangerous. Oh, he is very dangerous. Not to be trusted at all. Charming and dangerous. He is not to be trusted. Really? That's right. I think there must be at least ten crimes on his conscience. He betrays women as well. He lies. Indeed. But you suggested that... Oh, it was a joke. Something to amuse you. Oh, you're very pale, please. I... What did this Herman, or whatever his name is, tell you? Oh. Herman thinks he might be in love with you. He says that if he had the opportunity, he would take steps to woo you immediately. He would know how to make you happy. He would lavish gifts upon you. And yet he is not to be trusted, you see. Mm, not to be trusted? Not at all. And where may he have seen you? Uh, in church, perhaps? Or when you were out walking? Heaven only knows. In your own room, maybe. While you are asleep, perhaps he peers in at your window. Oh, really? <sighs> Come and dance with me. The Princess Pauline wants you. Oh, do you mind if I dance with her now? Of course not. I'm tired. I sit down. Excuse me. I'm coming, Princess. Now to the side door. There he goes. Through the anteroom. Past the footman, asleep on a soiled, old-fashioned armchair by the lamp. Pass lightly by the footman. The ballroom and the drawing room are in darkness. The lamp and the anteroom sheds a dim light. Such riches. The vases must be worth a fortune. What about me? The girl is nothing. I'm in love with the wealth. Is Tomsky right? Armchairs upholstered in faded damask. Sofas with cushions ranged round walls hung with Chinese wallpaper. A portrait of a stout, red-faced man, 40 years old. A light green uniform with a star on his breast. Is that the Count? Perhaps he does not love me. A portrait of a beautiful young woman. An aquiline nose. The Countess. Perhaps he has never loved me. A rose nestles in the powdered hair drawn back over her temples. I shall live in palaces and have all the women I want. He wants money, does he? Well, he shall have it. Oh, does he love me? Is he lying? Every corner is crowded with porcelain shepherdesses, valuable clocks, little boxes, roulettes, fans... A thousand and one toys for a lady of fashion. Oh, this is the way. I will have to be very careful. Behind the screen, a small iron bedstead. To the right, a door into the study. And just as she said, to the left, the other door into the passage. And the staircase. This must lead to Lisa's room. Now into the study to wait for the key to my money. I wonder, how much is he to be trusted?
waiting. Ace, king, queen, remember the cards. Cards have sharp edges. How much longer? last, my little lease, my small fortune. Uh, let me help you, Countess. Oh, oh, I am so tired. Sit down, Countess. Uh, yes, just for a moment. Uh, oh, 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 that's better. Oh, your hot chocolate, Countess. Mm? Oh, thank you. I'll get your nightdress. She passes close by the study door where I stand out of sight. I can smell his cologne. Here you are, Countess. Hmm? No, just the pink, not the green, my dear. I smell her perfume. Can he smell my perfume? Come, help me take my cup off. There, Countess. Deal the cards. Thank you. To unhook my dress, please. Certainly, Countess. Oh. 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 Red and black. Thank you, my dear. Knave, ten, nine. Would you like your bed jacket, Countess? Hmm? Oh, yes, please. Oh, it was a long evening. Here you are, Countess. Oh, well, thank you. Shall I help you to bed? No. No, I shall sit by the window for a little longer. You may go now, Lise. Thank you, Countess. Shall I put out the candles? Yes. Yeah, take the candles away. L leave the lamp. Good night, Countess. Good night. I hear Lisa's footsteps scurrying up to her room. Eight, seven, six. Is he waiting for me? There she is. The old lady rocking in her chair. The air is full of powder from her wig. <laughs> Wait, what's that? Who's there? Countess, may I introduce myself? Who are you? Get away from me. For heaven's sake, do not be alarmed. I shall scream. I have no intention of doing you any harm. I have come to beg a favor of you. A favor? How did you get into my house? I shall not hurt you, Countess. You are too important to me. Only you can guarantee my happiness. <laughs> what is funny? You? I can guess why you are here, you silly young man. How can you possibly guess? You have come to ask me for my secret. Otherwise, you would not have sneaked in this way. Well? Well, what? The cards. Ace. Three cards in succession. King. To win. Queen. You are mad. Remember Chaplitsky and how you helped him to win back his money? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Please tell me how to find the three winning cards. It was a joke. A joke? Yes, a joke. There was no secret. Chaplitsky was simply lucky. I don't believe you. That is your privilege. I am telling the truth. For whom are you keeping your secret? Your three cards would not help a spendthrift. A man who does not take care of his inheritance will die a beggar, even if all the demons of this world were at his command. I am not a spendthrift. I know the value of money. Your three cards would not be wasted on me. Well, 
What do you say? I have nothing to say. It was a joke. I told you, it was a joke. And what about love? Love? What do you mean? If you have ever known what it is to love, really love, if you can remember the ecstasies of love, if any human feeling has ever stirred in you, I appeal to you. I need money to pursue my true love. As a wife, a lover, and a mother, I implore you by all that is holy in life not to reject my prayer. You are certainly eloquent. Tell me your secret. I have nothing to say to you. Perhaps it is bound up with some terrible sin, with the loss of eternal salvation, with some bargain with the devil. Perhaps you are a witch in disguise. That is enough. You are old. You have not much longer to live. I am ready to take your sin upon my soul. How dare you? Get out. Tell me your secret. Remember that a man's happiness is in your hands. Remember that my love is at stake. I have nothing more to say to you. Go. I will make you tell me. Do not threaten me. You will be sorry. Listen to me. I must know. Oh, please. Please, do, do not hurt me. I, I, shall, I shall scream. I will stop you. <gasps> For the last time, the three winning cards. Yes or no? <gasps> No! No! Very well, then. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What have I done? Please. Countess's bedroom. She is dead. Oh. I've killed her. What? Oh, merciful heaven, what do you say? She fell. Well, what happened? I, I didn't mean to do it. But why? How? I was talking to her about her secret, the three cards, and then suddenly she just collapsed. It must have been my fault. Why were you talking to her? You were coming to see me. I, I wanted to know. What on earth had the three cards to do with it? I must know the secret of the three cards. But you were coming to see me. I must know the secret. I need money. But those passionate letters. I love you, Liz. And you love money. Of course, who does not? I, I need money for you. My dear, to, to give you rings and beautiful gowns. I don't believe you. It is not me you want, it is money. You and money, my darling. With, with money, I can buy you everything your heart desires. No. And, and of course, I want beautiful things too. Do you want me without money? Just as we are. We must live in an appropriate style. You didn't mean a word you wrote to me. Oh, yes. How can you say that? I love you. You love me? Really? Of course. Really. There. Now do you believe me? Oh, Herman. Are you sure you didn't mean what you said about the money? No, oh, of course not. It was just... I was just... Teasing. I love you more than any amount of money. I, I was, I was distraught. I didn't know what I was. <laughs> the Countess. <laughs> I did not mean to shock her. <laughs> oh, <please. laughs> what am I to do? <laughs> Are you really contrite? Of course I am. 
I'm human. I have a conscience. And you love me more than anything. I do. I do. Oh, please help me. Very well. You must go down the secret staircase. I will see that everything is all right. Here. Take this key. At the bottom of the stairs from my room is a door to the secret staircase. Oh, yes. Oh, I do love you. I swear I do not mean to harm your mistress. Oh, please, what are we to do? Are you religious? Do you have something to console you? No. No, not at all. I, I have my conscience. That is all. Oh, please, what shall we do? After you have gone, I shall tell the servants I found the Countess. I shall say it was an accident. Please. How can I thank you? There is no need. Now go. Hurry. looks magnificent. She is so still. Beautifully still. She looks almost alive. This saintly woman passed peacefully away. So many lighted candles. All the relatives are in deep mourning. Children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Why are only the servants weeping? Tears would be an affectation for her friends. Everyone respected her. She had a long life, a touching preparation for a Christian end. The Countess was so old, her death could not have taken anyone by surprise. Indeed. The angel of death found her vigilant in devout meditation. Gather to pay your respects. What happens now? First, the relatives go to bid farewell to the Countess. And then the procession of mourners goes past the coffin. Come, we shall join them. Kneel to pay your respects. She looked at me. Nonsense. She, she, she winked. Don't be silly, Herman. Look, look at her. You are imagining it. She moved. She is smiling at me. Oh, God! Help me! Help us, please! Quick! Oh, sweet Sorry, my How you well, sir? Him. 
Oh, it is my fault. Nonsense. He seduced you. He took advantage of your innocence to make you fall in love with him. But Countess, he does love me. You believe he loves you? Of course, he told me. I believed him. He kissed me. He kissed you. That proves nothing. He persuaded you to let him into the house because he wants money. He hasn't even got the courage to gamble on his own behalf. No one has ever kissed me before, Countess. He knows that. He is a liar. An accomplished liar. He has humiliated you. What am I to do? Help me avenge my death and your own betrayal. But how? You must be cold as ice and twice as resolute. I can try, if you are right. Oh, Countess, I need love. You must be strong. You must learn that if you have money, you do not need love. But Countess, how can that be? I will help you. You will find that my will provides for you. Now, listen carefully. My spirit will not rest until I have satisfied my desire for vengeance. I am sure he loves me. You are also sure that he loves money, are you not? Well, yes. Do as I say. If he loves you, he will come through the test. Are you willing to try? Mm. Yes. I suppose so. Good. Now, listen to me. This is what you must do. Have you recovered from yesterday, Herman? Uh, much better. No, thank you. How did you sleep? Not very well. I'm so tired. What time is it? Midnight. Will you have a drink? This may help, Herman. What is it? A special powder the Countess used to take to help her sleep. Try it. Oh, thank you, Liz. You are so thoughtful, my darling. Herman, dear. Good night. Good night, Liz. Don't forget to take the powder. I won't. He is ready, Countess. Who is that? Who's there? Who is it? I can hear you. Speak to me, for God's sake, speak to me. It is I, Herman. Remember me? Countess? But I... Listen to me. Where have you come from? I thought... Do not think. I have come to you against my will. What? I am commanded to grant your request. My request? For my secret. But who has commanded you? A power greater than both of us. Your destiny has commanded me. The cards. The secret of the three cards. Yes, the cards. Oh, what are they? Tell me, please. You really want to know? Oh, yes. No matter what the consequences are? Whatever happens, my destiny commands it. You said so yourself. Very well. These are the cards. The... 
three, the seven, and the ace will win for you. Three, seven, ace. So simple. It is so simple. Thank you. You must play them one after the other. I will. But you must not stake more than one card in 24 hours. But, Countess, what if I lose? I may need to play more than once. You will win. I promise. But only if you do as I say. If that is the only way. It is. And you must also promise never to play again as long as you live. Never? Never. Never again? Those are my conditions. Otherwise, you will be punished for killing me. <laughs> but you cannot tell anyone. Lise can. Ah, uh, Lise, I forgot about Lise. I shall forgive you my death on one condition. And what is that? On condition that you marry Lise and make her happy. I am determined to marry her. That is why I need the money. You need the money. And Lise must be happy. She loves you. Love is the most important thing for her. And for you. Perhaps. I must leave you now. Remember what I have said. Gold and silver. The three, the seven, the ace. My love or his money. Three, seven, ace, silver and gold. Ace, seven, three. Seven, three, ace. Which will it be? Again? No, this time I shall gamble. Ah, bravo! Did you hear that, everyone? I, uh, I thought I would chance it for once. <laughs> what is the time, Herman? Five minutes to seven. It is time to play. I'm ready. We shall be rich soon, please. Are you sure it will work? Trust me, I have an instinct. You are so clever. Now, Rumov, who is that fat man? That's Leskov. He owns the gambling rooms. An ace. He looks like a gigantic spider. He has spent his life at the card table. He has won millions. He accepts promissory notes when he wins, and he pays his losses in ready money. All his fellow players have great confidence in him. Everyone respects him. He is always smiling. Have him. Come and be introduced to him. There is time before you play. Are you sure? Of course. Come on. The place is so crowded. Everyone is here. Lazy young men with nothing better to do. Leskov, this is my friend Herb. Delighted to meet you, my dear young man. How do you do? Sit down. Sit down. Hurry now. Thank you. And will you play? Of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take a card. Thank you. How much do you want to bet? Forty-seven thousand. Oh, you take the leave of your senses, man. Isn't that rather high? That is my stake. Do you accept my bet or not? Well, friends, what do you think? Shall I accept this gentleman's bet or not? Well, yes, yes. yes. Oh, why not? Very well, place your bet uh, to double the stake. There. A promissory note, will that do? Uh, Shall I trust this man? Well, well, why not? Yes, oh, all you are. <laughs> Very well. You have an honest face. <laughs> I trust you. Oh, well done. Oh, 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 oh. I shall deal. There. 
on the right a nine, left a three. And they have the three as well. <laughs> <laughs> I win. <laughs> Incredible! <laughs> Will you bet again? <laughs> no, no. Once is enough. Oh, 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 no, 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 no more tonight. Oh. Will you correct your winnings now? If you please. Here you are. Thank you very much. <laughs> Will you have a drink before you go? Only a glass of lemonade, thank you. I trust we shall see you again. I shall come again tomorrow night. Ah, I will end it. Oh, Herman, how did you do it? Sheer chance, my darling. You were so calm, so assured, so confident. I, I was sure. Oh, I love you, Lise. I'm doing this for you. You can have anything you want. What shall I buy you? Oh, I don't need anything. That must be something you want. Just you. Herman. Yes? Did you have the money? What money? 47,000. Of course not. <laughs> oh, Herman! What impertinence! What daring! Oh, nothing can stop me now. You'll see tomorrow night. <laughs> 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 Welcome back, Herman. Do sit down. Thank you. I'm ready. Will you take a card? Thank you. And your bets? My winnings of yesterday. Oh, <laughs> not your original stake. Yes, that as well. Will you accept another promissory note? Oh, 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 oh. Certainly. A knave on the right. Knave on the right. A seven on the left. Seven on the left. I have the seven. There. What? The seven. I've won again. Well, I never. Will you play again? No. Enough for today. No, 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 really. Enough. Come, Miss. I shall be back. I shall be back again tomorrow. How did you do it a second time? Luck. I don't believe you. Did you mark the cards? How could I? Anyway, that would be dishonest. But it must be a miracle. That's exactly what it is. A miracle. You won't play again tomorrow, will you? Of course. I said I will. And what will happen tomorrow? There will be another miracle, you will see. Look, Herman, all the generals and the privy councillors have come to watch you. Stand back, everyone, please. Stand back. Are you ready to play a game tonight, sir? Yes, I certainly am. We have new packs of cards. They are so beautiful, inscrutable and shiny. Deal. This one, I think. Yes, this is my card. And your bet? My winnings from the last two evenings. Oh, brother. Brother. Oh, yes. 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 Are you ready? Good luck, my darling. I am ready. Deal? Look how his hands are trembling. One card. A queen falls on the right. And another. An ace on the left. And here is my card. An ace, I think. But Herman... Well, well... I'm afraid not. 
What do you mean? I, I have matched the ace with an ace. Look properly. Oh, um, it is the Queen of Spades. Your queen has lost, I'm afraid. What, 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 what queen? I played an ace, the ace of spades. It must be. The queen of spades. That is not an ace. That is the queen of spades. Look. The queen of spades. God, how can that be? There, there must be a mistake. I swear I played an ace. There is no mistake. The queen of spades. The queen of spades. Look, ace. Herman, it doesn't matter if you've lost. She is winking at me. Who is winking at you, Herman? The old woman. She is mocking me. The queen of spades. She is winking at me. Will you play again? No. No, I have no money left. Excuse me, I, I must go. Excuse me. Herman! Herman, wait for me! Oh, Settle down, Herman. Could she do this to me? Ooh, what do you mean, Herman? She swore I would win. Well, you can play again, Herman. She said I was to gamble only once each evening, and that is what I did. Oh, well, you will win another time, Herman. She made me promise never to play again. I cannot play again. Who are you talking about? The old lady, the countess. But the countess is dead, Herman. She came to me after she died. Oh, Herman, really? She spoke to me. Oh, you must have dreamt no, it. No, 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 it was no dream. She told me her secret. You are mad. She made me promise. She swore I would win. Bitch! You are frightening me. Three, seven, ace. That is what she said. Enough, Herman. I'll kill her. She is dead. The Countess is dead. I will murder her. I will strangle her. I will shoot her. Herman, stop it! You... You made me do it. What do you mean? It was because I fell in love with you. You wanted money. I don't care about money. All you want is money. I want love. You want money, you bitch. You never loved me. You were using me. You're angry with me just because you lost. You never cared about me. You are the one who only cares about money. You women are all the same. <laughs> Herman has gone out of his mind. Well done, Countess. He cannot talk to anyone. Three, seven, queen. She winked at me. He will not see anyone. Three, seven, queen. Lise has married a very pleasant young man. A most pleasant young man. Paul Tomsky. Lovely Lise. We have everything we can want, thanks to you, Countess. I have been promoted to the rank of captain. I love you, Paul. And I am very rich. The Queen of Spades. I hate her. The Queen of Space. The Ace of Queens. The Spade of Threes. Three and Ace equals Queen. Threes. shall take in a poor young relative who will be my maid and look after me. Ah. One day she may meet a handsome young officer. Who enjoys gambling? Who <laughs> enjoys gambling more than loving. <laughs> time to sleep now, Countess. Yes. Time to sleep. I shall miss you. Your husband needs you, Lise. No need to miss the Queen of Spades. I can rest. 
now we are both avenged. A pack of cards. Three is an ideal number. Three cards. How many more than three in a pack of cards? How do you choose the right card out of the whole pack? How bleak the sky is. Four suits in every pack of cards. How dull the evening is. How tediously the hours pass. Five spades. Shall we play cards? Six clubs. Oh, yes. Yeah. Let's play cards. No. Seven diamonds. Deal. Yes. Let us play cards. Eight hearts. Deal now. I shall play. I shall win. Nine kings and queens. What does it feel like to win? I shall lose. I always lose. Ten aces and jacks. Who wants to lose? I'll let you have credit. Eleven trumps. One of the suits will be Trump's. Trump's will win. In the bleak winter weather. Diamonds, clubs, spades, hearts, 12 and 13. Let us meet together. Either we shall win or we shall lose. Hearts, clubs, spades, diamonds, win or lose. One. Two, three, four. It makes no difference. I always win in the end. 